On the surface, this might look like revenge for Helldivers and Stellar Blade, but really, this has been going on for quite a while. In fact, it's been going on for so long they've been able to put together a plot line and now a casting call for presumably a mocap actor. This information comes to us from Noticias Plestation. I think I said that right. If I didn't, please feel free to correct me down in the comments below. But thanks to good old Google Translate, Hopefully you got it right. Again, if you have a better translation on this, please let us know down in the comments. But so far, this says, a casting for PlayStation Studios game currently in production would be looking for the following. A girl of around 20 to uh, 30 years old, of dark skin and transgender. Now that may be a little conflicting. Girl and transgender, that, that's a little conflicting. Now again, there are no um, middle sex, you know, um, identifiers in the Spanish language. There's a, a very pronoun-driven, if you will, he, him, she, her driven language, you know. Uh, so when we get into trying to apply identifiers in Spanish to things like feminine traits, they tend to default to girl. So here we have a feminine person of 20 to 30 years old with dark skin and transgender who is a knife expert. And, you know, it just happened to be you got enough going on in your life, but you also like playing with knives. The story would be about how their culture does not accept, accept women as leaders in their community. Now, this again, this is a casting call. So they're letting people know up front that this is what the game is going to be about. So people who are of this thinking or want to contribute to this thinking will be attracted to this casting call. It's not just random people who happen to be trans and a knife expert as well. There's just so many of those people around, you see. But Noticias PlayStation had this to say. I'm not trying to say it stupid. I really am trying to, you know, say it right. So Noticias PlayStation had this to add later on. Regarding the casting call that I published a few days ago, I would like to clarify some things. It was never bait. It is 100% real. Now, it sounds a little nutty, right? That they're looking for a person that is just so very niche, again, like you can't, for some reason, you can't mocap a female actor or a male actor and then strap the uh, 3D character on top of the mocap skeleton. You have to specifically have someone of this race and decided sexual behavior. It's YouTube. I got to be careful with how I say things, all right? It's YouTube. The info was taken from a page where you can have to you have to register to see casting calls. But there are also Ubisoft, Activision, and other Sony Interactive Entertainment games casting calls there. Now I added that last piece on to kind of clarify. Now Noticias PlayStation had to say about this. I claim that uh, it is a PlayStation Studios game because the casting director's history is 90, 99% of the time working for Sony Interactive Entertainment. Trust me, I would never go into the mud without being 100% sure of things with a sensitive topic like this. Now, uh, a very helpful uh, 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 excuse me, Twitter account that reports on this, uh, Rhino, uh, Rhino the Bouncer, if you will, had some clarification, just some minor clarification on this because of the translation issues. And he had to say, PlayStation Studios is reportedly looking for a, looking for a new casting for a new game currently in production. A person who is 20 or 20 to 30 years old with dark skin and is also identifying as a trans woman, okay? A knife expert, as we read before. And now again, he clarifies, this is not a mistranslation, that this is a story that revolves around how this trans person's culture doesn't accept women as leaders in their community. Now, there's a lot of subtext that can be looked into that, but it's pretty obvious what they're going for is that because the trans person identifies as female, they'll be like the Kitsak Hitarak or something like that. Wasn't that what it was in Dune, the Kitsak Hitarak? I could be saying it wrong. But yeah, uh, that guy that could see both the female and the male histories and futures in perfect harmony, that's probably what this character will be. In fact, the more that I think about this, it's probably a Dune game. They're probably trying to do some like, trans dune game some some Furman that is uh trans come to think of it that's that sounds kind of what they're doing here 
Maybe they're telling a different story about how Shanti was a little more Sean than T, if you will. But I digress. He brings up that the source came from a place called Actors Access. Now, we went and took a look at this website. All right, now this is, a, on its surface, it appears to be a, like, aggregation service for actors. So what you do is you'd sign up here, and then you'd be able to, like, post your headshots, your resume, as it says right here, your performance media, all sorts of things to help you get casted. And then also, this is a space where people looking to cast folks will go and take a look at this stuff. So not only can you post all of the stuff that will get you casted, this is a place that also attracts people who do hire folks for performance art or performance pieces, corporate or otherwise. This appears to be mainly targeted at corporate people. However, up in this corner, excuse me, I'm pointing in the right place. Up in this corner right here, it says uh, a breakdown a, a, by breakdown services. You'll see that up here in this corner right here. It's a little teeny tiny on the screen. I'm very sorry about that. Very teeny tiny here. But that's what it says. It says by breakdown services. Now, we jumped over and took a look at breakdown services. Now, this is, again, another um, aggregate of talent. They specifically deal in getting, getting a project organized to put out a casting call and a uh, uh, sort of, I, I would say, a, a casting call for help is kind of an easy way to put it. Like, they're looking for light experts, cinematographers, people who are specific in, like, areas of, like, the jungle or they're, de they're dealing with mountaintops, folks that have a very niche sort of uh, uh, profession when it comes to, like, producing works of film or um, uh, moving art, if you will, so, like, animation, 3D or otherwise, that kind of thing. It also uh, does like for actors again, like we'll see like your actors, casting directors, filmmakers, this sort of stuff. Um, you can post your own breakdowns on this website as well. Now, again, this is how agents and managers submit their clients and their control actors and the control actors have over their careers right here on this website. It says it's trusted by every major studio. Now, that stood out to me when I was looking at this a little earlier. I was like, really? This boring website that is just wall-to-wall -wall earth tones is what the industry standard is for aggregating talent. So I went over and I took a look at their frequently asked questions here. And it says, what is a breakdown? Now this, let's, let's clarify what this is. It says, a breakdown is in a synopsis of the entire script, including complete character descriptions of each role, the key creative and production team members, location, start dates, rate of pay, union affiliations, and any special notes or requests, such as must be good at knife fighting, must also be dark-complected and trans, a trans woman specifically. Okay, so that's what they do here. That's, they create this stuff. It's not just for actors. It's also for other talent that would be needed to be involved in this sort of thing, like someone for a location, for instance. There would be a union member that either had to deal with like some like specific mocap, for instance, like a mocap specialist would be given this breakdown, for instance. But let's go on and see what goes on with this. It says, um, how do projects get cast? All right. So just so we understand how this process is working, this is for probably for mocap, if not just for uh, voice acting completely. What I say is mocap is because they have to be good with knife fighting. And it's kind of useless if you're a voice actor. You don't need to know how to knife fight if you're just saying words with gusto into the microphone. You don't have to, you know, I don't have to know how to use a knife to do that. But if I'm going to be a mocap actor that's also delivering uh, lines and physical motion, I would probably need to know how to use a weapon in order to look good in the game's uh, usage of me, if you will. So this is how projects get cast. It says a casting director or filmmaker will send us their project information and we will work with them to get their breakdown prepared for release. They decide where they want it to go and we release it to agents and managers and or actors in those regions. Agents and managers review projects on breakdownexpress.com and actors review things on actors access, which here it is. We looked at that earlier right here. So as you can see, they have their wonderful bland baby poop colored color palette here just really worrying color palette they have but so this is again this verifies that this is all one piece this is all one engine doing all of this 
Now, here's where they're honest about what they said earlier on the front page about being the industry standard. It says, we post over 97% of all scripted content that requires actors in North America. That means between Canada and the USA, Breakdown Services is it. That's it. This should be terrifying to consider that even voice actors do not have this narrow, like voice actors for animation, like the people involved in that dust up with Weeb Wars there in the Dragon Ball studio with all those actors and actresses not liking each other and jelly beans or something like that. Somebody said something that hurt somebody else's feelings. This, they don't even have to deal with that tight of a bottleneck that there's one service that handles all this. Look at this. This is insane to consider that this is what you have to go through in order to be put in this place. And also, these are the people that are in charge of it that are putting out these crazy things like this. That Sony Interactive Entertainment has this one place to go, right? So it's all aggregating through this one website back into Sony Interactive Entertainment looking for this person to be a, a dark-skinned trans woman who is also a knife expert for a story that revolves around rejecting women as leaders in a society, all right? There's one single website that handles all of that. That is, a, that is a problem. That's why you end up with all this crazy talent is because one place gets to decide, A, who gets listed, and B, where they get distributed. So even if you are a talent that is good at, at knife fighting and you just so happen to be uh, uh, dark-skinned, I guess, dark-complected, however you want to put it, it doesn't matter if they don't either like your politics, if they don't like you, if you don't come from the correct pedigree, or, you know, if it turns out that you're not trans enough for them, guess what? These people over here at uh, Breakdown Services are 97% of, who, are, are, of, the, of the breakdowns and casting calls that are put out in North America. If they don't like you, it's over with. And thus, this is why this is happening. I know, I know it's a bit quick here, so let me break it down. You have one institution that enforces an idea. Consider that Disney is the largest in family entertainment. They kind of suck the air out of the room whenever they put out children's entertainment. Doesn't matter what's going on with Shrek. Doesn't matter what's going on with any other studio trying to put out children's entertainment. Disney's releases just suck the air out of the room. Now, this is what this breakdown services offers is the thing. They control 97% of what's put out into the North American casting market. That's why this stuff happens, because there's nobody to push back. There's nobody to say, whoa, whoa, hey, no, you could take that over to Breakdown Services. We're the 3% that doesn't do this. You know, that, there's nobody out there to do it. Who cares about that 3%? You know, they're just 3% out there saying, oh, no, you got to take that to Breakdown. This is why we have this problem. There's such an apparatus now that it's one way. When they tell you they're resisting, they're resisting that 3%. That's what they're resisting. The 3% that's not down with this kooky wooky stuff. Now, in reality, when you get back to why this is happening, okay, let's strip this all the way back to Sony, okay? Why is Sony putting out this casting call? To put out this game, obviously. Duh, right? They've got to have their mocap actor to put out their game. However, this game is specifically made to piss people off. Why are they making a game to piss people off? Because it's the only way they can market. It's the only way they can advertise. Think about it for a minute. If you don't have an ad blocker you pay for, you most likely use one you download or is built into the browser that you use. Okay? A lot of people use ad blockers, even if you don't, if you happen to be that, that 3%, you know, that very tiny percentage of people that endure the ads, most people don't. And so there's no way for these corporations to advertise to you, me, anybody else that isn't out here waiting for the ads to come along in the middle of the videos we've clicked on. Like you clicked on the video just for the Chevy ad, you know, in the middle of it. But that's, that's why this is happening. They can't reach us any other way. They have to tick us off so much that we become the engine of advertising for them. Think about that. You and me, when I talk about this game later on when it comes out, I will be advertising for them. 
That's the purpose of doing this stuff. They deliberately create things that force a dialogue to happen so that it'll be advertised in places that it can't reach because the majority of people in those spaces are, one, turned off to the message, and two, using an ad blocker. And that's what this is. You want to know why the Acolyte sucks so hard? Why the Acolyte is such a mess? It's to get eyes on it. How else are they going to advertise this stuff? Where are they going to put it? Do, do you pay attention to a bus sign anymore? Is a billboard anything you pay attention to? I don't even know people who use QR codes. It's, it's all about what's happening in your immediate, like, local internet space. Your, your internet bubble that Google algorithms has helped build for you. Your selected content, if you will. And that's the point of making games like this, is to force people to talk about them where they can get advertising through that conversation that they don't have to pay for. That's the scheme here. And it gets dumber and dumber because after a while, people get numb to this level of being pissed off. So then they have to ante it up to here to piss people off again. I bet the guys over at Bethesda were cream corning in their pants when Az was screaming into his microphone about pronouns. In fact, I promise you, someone in the marketing department was like, yes, yes, this is exactly what I wanted. I promise you, that's what happened. But what are we going to do? We have to call it out. You can't sit here and say, well, they're deliberately using me to get their message out. So you can't stick your fingers in your ears and ignore it because they're just going to find another thing. Look at Warhammer. I was told for years that Warhammer was impervious to the woke mind virus. But here we are today. They're even thinking about shelving this thing with Henry Cable in it now because they can't force their agenda in it hard enough. They can force their agenda in it, but they can't force it in hard enough. With Henry Cable in, char in charge of it. Could be Cavill. I say it Cable. Whatever. He's an underwear model. Don't worry about it. But the situation still matters to this being pissed off situation. To being angry about a product. And thus you talk about it. And thus other people become curious and want to look into it. We can't not talk about these things because they are promoting a unhealthy lifestyle. I, I know it's controversial to say in 2024, but augmenting your body for reasons that don't make it easier for you to breathe, eat, or, you know, generally exist in the sense of, like, relieving yourself, right? You have to have cosmetic surgery to have your, your genitalia do its job properly because of whatever goof happening in your genetics, right? I'm somebody that had my genetics goofed, and now I use the bathroom out the front. OK, I'm one of the people that they want to pitch to with these divergent identity ideas, and I hate it. I don't want a protagonist that has a, a, a poop collection bag on the front of them. I'm not going to feel good about that. I'm going to feel called out by that. I'm going to feel like I, I guess I need to go conquer planets now because that guy did it and he's doing the same problems I got. I don't want that. I want to play the characters like Link. I want to play a character like Captain Falcon. I want to play characters like Lord Draken in the Power Rangers Battle for the Grid video game. I want to play Sonic. Characters that I otherwise would never be able to live like. I am not a blue hedgehog. In fact, I don't like chili dogs. You can let me know all about it down in the comments. If you made it this far in the video, comment chili dogs below. Especially if you like them. I don't which means I'll never be Sonic, right? Not only am I not a blue hedgehog, but I also don't like chili dogs. It is what it is. It's not about, video games aren't about representation. They're about escapism. And they keep pushing this stuff to make us talk about it while it's killing the entirety of the medium. It almost seems like it's on purpose. But you know what? I'll see you in the next video. And until then, good luck out there.